you're doing well and of course Arnie does too. In today's video I will be focusing on the beautiful country of Colombia. Colombia is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world and has the highest amount of species by area in the world. It has more bird species than Europe and North America combined and is also home to some fascinating natural sites such as the River of Five Colours. As Colombia's ecosystem is so diverse it's even more important that we protect it. Because of this stopping the spread of invasive species may be more important in Colombia than it is in any other country. In today's video I'll be going through just a few problem species in this area as I'll be going through five problem invasive species in Colombia and for our first species we'll head to the fresh waters of Southeast Asia as we have the snakeskin gourami. The species can be found in a wide range of biotopes but tends to prefer areas with slower moving water such as flooded forests and slow moving canals. In these waters they are normally found around floating vegetation where they feed on terrestrial and aquatic invertebrates, algae, detritus and fish eggs and on this diet they can reach a maximum size around 30 centimeters or 12 inches. As these fish have interesting markings and are also very adaptable, they make great aquarium fish. But these fish are also farmed for their meat, which is one of the reasons they can be found in Colombia today. Colombia has many famous rivers running through it, such as the Amazon and the Rio Orinoco. These rivers are known for their biodiversity, with over 3,000 species of fish living in the Amazon River alone. As there are so many large predators living in these rivers, it can be quite a hard place to survive. It's thought that the snakeskin gourami first found its way into South American waters through farms. These farms were designed to raise the fish either for food or for the aquarium trade, but either some of these specimens escaped or were deliberately released into the wild. As Colombia is home to a lot of slow moving waters and flooded forests, the snakeskin gourami was able to breed and spread. Although these fish mainly eat algae and detritus, one part of their diet has caused a problem, as they've been known to feed on the eggs of other fish in the area, having negative impacts on their numbers. Many of the Amazon's large freshwater fish tend to breed in flooded forests, so the snakeskin gourami's feeding habits are affecting many species. Luckily there are plenty of predators that would happily eat a snakeskin gourami in Colombia, so hopefully they won't cause too big of a problem. But for our next species we'll be heading over to Africa as we have the hippopotamus. This large semi-aquatic mammal can be found in many large water sources in sub-Saharan Africa and in these waters they're known for being quite dangerous. In the day hippos remain cool by staying in the water or mud and emerge at dusk to feed on grasses and other plants. On this diet they can reach a maximum weight of around 3,000 kilograms, which is around two southern elephant seals or your average Asian elephant. Hippos are also the most dangerous and feared of all the animals in Africa, killing an estimated 500 people a year. They are most aggressive in the water where they are known for attacking and charging boats. In one case in 2014 in Niger, a boat was capsized by a hippo and 13 people were killed. Even out of the water they can be a problem as they will happily feed on crops which brings them into contact with farmers and these hippos can run at 19 miles per hour so there's little chance of escape. But how did such a large mammal make its way to Colombia? Well as I'm sure many of you know this story revolves around a very famous man known as Pablo Escobar. If you're unaware of who Pablo Escobar is, he was one of the most notorious criminals and was the founder of the infamous Medellin drugs cartel. This cartel was responsible for kidnappings, bombings and assassinations and at one point Pablo Escobar was thought to be one of the richest men in the world. If you have more money than sense one of the things that you might want to do is buy a hippo. This is exactly what Pablo Escobar did as he kept hundreds of exotic animals on one of his properties. After Pablo Escobar was killed in 19 1993. His animals on his property were distributed to zoos across the country, but unfortunately hippos are very hard to move. As the authorities didn't know what to do, they left these hippos there and assumed they would die. The authorities couldn't be more wrong, as these hippos have thrived in their new home, and their numbers seem to be on the rise. Originally there were four hippopotamuses on Pablo Escobar's estate, but by 2007 they had multiplied to 16, and in December of 2019 it was thought that there were around 120 individuals. As the population is growing at such a fast rate, it's thought that there could be thousands in a few decades. The hippo is officially the largest invasive species in the world, as it can have many negative effects on the ecosystem. As hippos eat large amounts of plant material, they can completely change the layout of wetland ecosystems and destroy crop production. Their active semi-aquatic lifestyle also kicks up detritus, and this can create toxic algal blooms, which prove fatal to thousands of fish. Their aggression and feeding habits mean they displace native species such as the West Indian manatee and the spectacled caiman. Despite these factors, there are some people who think these hippos aren't a problem. In Africa, hippos are listed as vulnerable to extinction, so a new population in the other part of the world may not be such a bad thing. Hippos also release a lot of nutrients into the water through their feces, and these hippos attract a lot of tourism. As it is too early to really see the effects of hippos in Colombia, authorities have taken the safe option and are sterilizing many of the hippos in the wild. And personally, I think this is the most interesting invasive species in the world. For our next species, we'll be heading over to East Africa as we have the giant African land
land snail. This snail can be found in a wide range of habitats, such as agricultural areas, urban areas, forests, and even wetlands. In these areas, it feeds on a wide range of food items, mostly plant material, fruit, vegetables, and sometimes even sand, small stones, and bones from carcasses. On this diet, they can reach a maximum size of around 20 centimeters across the shell, which makes them the largest terrestrial gastropod. These snails are known to not only be a problem in South America, but also across the world, as they're on the list of the 100 worst invasive species in the world, as they both spread very quickly and cause a lot of damage. The giant African land snail first found its way to South America and Brazil. They were imported as a new promising food source to replace the smaller native snails. They were advertised so aggressively that commercial breeders and even private homeowners began rearing these snails. This project soon became a failure and many frustrated breeders released them into the wild. These snails soon spread and found their way to Colombia. As these snails feed on over 500 varieties of plants, they've had a huge effect on the ecosystems, completely changing landscapes and even altering soil properties and outcompeting native mollusks. Many predators happily feed on snails, but the giant African snail is so large that many predators struggle tackling this species. So although they make strange yet interesting pets, you should never release them into the wild. But for our next species, we'll head up to North America as we have the American bullfrog. These amphibians typically inhabit permanent water bodies such as swamps, ponds and lakes. In these waters, the American bullfrog is known for being a very aggressive hunter, feeding on a wide range of animals such as fish, crayfish, turtles, water birds and other frogs. And on this diet, they reach an average body length of around 8 inches. Because of their aggressive feeding habits and their adaptability, they are another species that's on the 100 worst invasive species list. In many countries around the world, they are viewed as a food source and because of this, they were imported into South America. Many of these bullfrogs escaped into the wild, where they've had a huge impact on the ecosystem. As Colombia is such a biodiverse landscape, these bullfrogs had a wide range of prey that they could feed on. They compete with and feed on native amphibians and even small and juvenile fish. If this wasn't enough, these invasive frogs are also known to carry a fungus, which is linked to a global amphibian decline. So if Colombia is to stay as biodiverse as it is, these frogs will have to be controlled in the future. But for our final species, we'll be heading over to Asia as we have the tiger mosquito. If there's any type of animal that everyone hates, it's parasites. These parasitic insects can be found in tropical and subtropical areas in Asia, where it feeds on the blood of other animals. Unlike some mosquito species that are associated with wetlands, the tiger mosquito is closely associated with humans. It's thought that these parasites first found their way to Colombia in shipments from China. These mosquitoes soon spread, and instead of having a major effect on the ecosystem, they've had a major effect on people. In most cases, if you're bitten by a tiger mosquito, it'll mostly lead to irritation and discomfort. But tiger mosquitoes are also known to transmit pathogens and viruses, such as yellow fever virus and dengue fever. The Asian tiger mosquito was responsible for the chikungunya epidemic on the French island of Reunion, which ended up killing 248 people. The most effective way to combat these mosquitoes is to eliminate any areas of standing water. This can be anything from flower pots to bird baths. This means that the Asian tiger mosquito can't breed and they will eventually die out. So out of all the species on this list, the Asian tiger mosquito has to be the least popular. But that's about it for this video. If you have any other locations that you want me to cover, then leave them in the comments below. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.